All right, y'all. Now, after hearing about Kenya's bio, like you already know that this young lady is somebody that we got to know the details. She is a YouTube sensation, honey. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. No problem. <laughs> All right, so we are going to get into it. You know, someone like myself who's very new to the social media world, I just want to know, like, how did you get started? What made you say, you know what? I'm gonna get into YouTube. I'm gonna do this thing. Like, how did you get started? Well, honestly, like in high school, I used to always dress my friends. Like, they would never go anywhere without me coming over there first, putting their outfits together. And um, I originally started like watching YouTube for just like music videos and stuff like that. I didn't know they had a beauty community or fashions or anything of that sort. So. Uh, when I stumbled upon like a few girls and then I saw that they had like blogs outside of YouTube videos, I was like, hey, I could definitely do something like that. I love putting right. outfits together. I can talk about tips and styling. And that's pretty much how I got started. So that taps into when you have a passion, like when you have a purpose and you just know, like I actually talked about it in the last episode, that everybody has like a calling. We, yeah. It's just individuals that choose to listen. And you have to not minimize that talent and that gift that you have, right? Yeah. So there's some people that will say, okay, I like to, you know, look nice and dress people up and help my friends, but that'll never turn into something. So what was the light switch for you that said, I'm onto something beyond that, oh, my friends come to me, I'm kind of that go-to person. But how did you know that this was it? Like, did you try other avenues? Like, how did you decide this is it? Because I saw the value in their opinion. Mm. Uh, well, like, you know, my opinion as far as what they should wear. Like, yes. it wasn't just a one-time thing. And I saw the value in it. I saw they really took into account, like, the tips that I was giving them. So I was like, I could probably do this on a bigger scale. Right. And then um, I just had that faith in myself because I knew it was something that I really enjoyed. And at the time, I was in college for psychology. And although I do enjoy that, I'm more creative and I like mm -hmm. putting together like outfits and showing expression within yourself. So I was like, okay, why not just give it a shot and see where it goes? And then from there, my channel like develops into something bigger than what I could imagine because now I'm known for natural hair, which is something that I wasn't doing at all. Like my channel was just a fashion channel. Uh -huh. and Somebody just was like, hey, like, can you show us how you flat on your hair? So I was like, okay, because I never wore my hair curly. Mm -hmm. And then when I did the whole start to finish, they're like, oh, you have curly hair? Well, now we want to see wash and go. <laughs> like, what's the wash and go? So I started typing it in. And um, so my channel just like slowly evolved bigger than what I even imagined. Wow. So it goes to what people talk about. And what I talk about is just making yourself present and trusting yeah. the process. And being fluid, like allowing yourself to just flow and go from point A to point B, because eventually your brand and your vision is going to grow. But the foundation of who you are and what you do will pretty much be the same. You just yeah. build on it like you're building a house. Um, now, for me, I struggle with being consistent. So can you tell us about the start of your YouTube, the start of you really tapping into social media and how you've grown? And even tell us some numbers, if you know, like where you were and like where you're at now. I think that's terrific. consistency plays a really big part and I noticed that um when it, it comes in waves so times where I'm not as consistent I don't see the results mm -hmm. and um, you know if you don't make certain things a priority you won't see results it's just plain and simple so I know where times where I was really putting in the work I saw that growth and in the beginning I was pumping out a lot of content uh -huh. getting views faster um, but then, you know, certain things happen and you slack off and I was still working full time at the Marriott at the time. So I couldn't really devote a lot of time to it. Mm -hmm. I would say one of the biggest changes in my YouTube career was moving to Florida. Like oh. from Baltimore to Florida, my channel has grown so much faster in the past couple years than it had. Like I was on YouTube for like four years before that. Wow. And just the change of environment, being around more creatives, uh -huh. having more like opportunities to create, which in turn keeps me being consistent. So I would say definitely that change of environment has changed everything about my channel. That's huge. And so let me ask you this. When you um, moved from up north and came here, 
a lot of people struggle with finding that connection, struggle with finding their tribe in their place. How are you able to do that and still take, stay true to your brand and who you are? Honestly, I feel like it was an easier transition because being up north, there weren't really a lot of people in my space. So it was gotcha. hard to relate to a lot of people. Um, they didn't really understand what I was doing, you know, mm -hmm. that it's not a real job type of, you know, thing. And they don't know that it is a real business and it actually right. takes more dedication to work for yourself than to work for a company. Um, so when I moved Tell down me. here, um, it was so many more people that were genuinely interested, people that were actually in my field, which, you know, you get that teamwork and that helps mm -hmm. you be consistent because you meet another blogger and you both need content. So you're like, okay, let's set aside a day. Right. Out, like, you know, a lot of content. And I feel like that's what also helps me be consistent because I don't just do one thing per day. I right. try to like take one whole day and do a lot of content that way. I can just post and not have to like do content that day and post that becomes overwhelming. Right. So you take some time like out your week, like maybe two days out the week, you do two, three, four outfits or videos or whatever. Now you have time to kind of space it out and don't like overwhelm yourself. For sure. I think it's huge because you found, a, found your talent. Well, you already knew your talent. You figured out a way to maximize it. You found a place. And when I, you and I talked a little bit before actually doing the interview, um, you had a quote and you said that you, I'm going to pull up my notes because I want to say it right. Okay. Now, you um, <laughs> talked about, you know, you identified that this was your career path. And when we were talking, you said that being in fashion and in this world, you figured out that fashion allowed you, was an endless place to be. What yes. do you mean by that? I feel like it's an endless place to be because there are no rules when it comes to mm -hmm. fashion. There are no rights or wrongs, you know. It's all about expression. It's all about how you feel in that time. And I feel like fashion allows people to really either be themselves or be someone that they, you know, never thought they could be without right. being judged. You know, there's so many different, like, avenues in fashion when it comes to styling, clothes, decorating, this and that. It's like there's no limits. Mm -hmm. So if someone that who, who is creative, you know, that's good that there's no cap, there's no limitations on that because it's always evolving. There's never mm -hmm. a time where it stops, you know, and even if something comes back in style, it's still tweaked a little bit differently, right. you know, so it's like, it's, it's definitely endless. And I feel like if you are a creative, being in the fashion avenue or just being around that will definitely help you not get like that writer's block type of, you know, feeling. Because yeah, it's to draw from all the time. So, is there anything that I don't like to use the word fear, but mm -hmm. promotes a a type of emotion when you want to try something new or add something different to your brand? Um, how have you? What are some of those experiences in the past, and how have you overcome those? Um, I would say like one of so I have two, mm -hmm. and I've been really working on both of them, honestly. Um, the first one is like, like part of my channel. I didn't present myself like authentically, you know, I was like making sure I was so like polished and this and that, which like my personality is a lot more fun. You know, <laughs> so as as I've grown, I'm like, okay, I'll test out certain things and certain mm -hmm. videos that will do well are just me being myself. So it's like, I'm trying to definitely show more of my personality and be more personable within my brand because uh -huh. I think that is what your audience wants to see. Yes, they like, you know, a pretty picture or a nice video or, or editing, but they really want to connect with you as a person. And I feel like I'm really authentic in my real life. So I'm trying to translate that on camera. Yeah. Um, and then the second one goes hand in hand, like talking, being like, you know, events and speaking and stuff like that. Uh -huh. I just feel like I clam up so much and I don't understand why, but then <laughs> once I get into it, then, you know, you start seeing my personality and it's like, okay, like she, she's dope. So um, those two things, like just showing my personality and public speaking are things that I've been working on. Right. And so when these opportunities come up, I definitely don't how I make sure that I take them on full force so that the more I do it, the more comfortable I become. Gotcha. And I think that's in any any place in life is that 
you're not going to feel comfortable in every area. You're not going to necessarily have time to practice. But again, as your brand expands, if you want to continue to grow, you have to continue to add on to that. Um, I can say like with the podcast and trying to transition for me on YouTube, that has been a challenge. Like what platform to use, what to talk about, what's the time limit, um, when to post, you know, um, how, what do I need a fancy intro? Things that I have no clue how to do. And I have to say, you know, just take your time, put out what you can and learn and educate and develop. And then you start to meet people that can suggest things and help you with things. So I think that's incredible. But what most importantly that you said is the authenticity. And I am huge on that. And it's something that my podcast, being a meditation instructor, um, it really forces me to be authentic, right? Like I can't yeah. be on here talking about self-care and not perform and not demonstrating self-care for myself. I'm human. I fall short, but I communicate that when things aren't going well. And I will say that through your images, and I have watched some of your YouTube videos, you definitely are authentic. Like you present as if I know you, right? I've mm-hmm. met you one time in real life. Um, but you it is a vibe that you have that like, hey, nice and cool, what's up? Let's talk. And it comes across in your video. So for you, I'm actually shocked for that to be an area that you are not necessarily like you're still working on. Because it doesn't really? look that. Yeah, you you look comfortable. Um, because I don't know if I can sit out here and do photo shoots all the time. Like I love a good photo shoot. <laughs> but honey, I couldn't do it with you had a video recently of you were showing different outfits with like one with one garment and you were showing different Oh outfits. yeah. Girl, no, I shop off of a mannequin. So <laughs> <laughs> I walk in the store and say, I want that shirt, that thing. give me this whole outfit that she's wearing. Right. Just give me the whole thing. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So when I see you do that, it, for someone like me, I'm like, oh, I do have a jumpsuit that I could probably throw a blazer on and try. So you know what I'm saying? So it's just those little things, but seeing you do it, I'm assuming it's at home and things like that. It's like, you know, yeah. it's like everybody else. So yeah. that's huge. That's huge. Now, were there other things that you were interested in before coming into fashion? I'm sorry. Say it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> were there other things that you were interested in before coming into fashion? Example, like I was an athlete, oh. so sports was something I was always into but i didn't go pro and i'm just like what do i do next but i mm-hmm. always like to help people i've always like to motivate people and encourage folks but i never knew the career path for that so was there yeah. anything that you, like because life conditions us a certain way so was there anything like that for you um yeah definitely so um all throughout high school i studied psychology and um mm-hmm. that's what i was doing when i got to college um it was a toss-up between being a psychologist and a forensic science Wow. And um, so, <laughs> yeah, I know that's like a complete change from <laughs> in those things. But uh, to be honest, I'm really interested in the brain, how the brain works, you know, what makes people do certain things. Right. And I feel like that definitely does relate to fashion because yes. what a person picks out to wear is like what drove that decision. You know, exactly. why do they feel comfortable with this fabric, with this color, with this outfit choice? Um, so it all stems back to the same thing. And that's why I'm trying to like blend them hand mm-hmm. like together. Um, I still haven't lost my interest for psychology and stuff like that. So I've been introducing a little bit of life coaching um, mixed in with, you know, real life experiences. I've talked right. about a lot of stuff that's happened to me and how I've overcame them. Um, just giving tips on being feminine, um, manifestation, affirmations, all of these things, um, because I'm a big spiritual person as well. So I don't let it like fall back to the wayside. I still stay stay true to myself as far Uh as what I genuinely love. Um, But fashion is just, that's me wholeheartedly too. So, you know, that's awesome because as soon as you said psychology, I was like, that makes sense. Because, yes, when someone picks out clothes, it says a lot about them, but also styling people, right? Like, you understand yeah. different personalities, what they come in, um, how they present themselves. You already kind of know, and it gives you an edge because you see it through a different lens. Um, and I think right. a lot of people miss that, that you have transferable skills. Like, if you're leaving corporate America, there are some skills that you can take into a creative space and be probably even more successful. So that's huge. Exactly. Because I really don't feel like a lot of people 
dig that deep into when it comes to styling, actually really getting to know their client in and out and not just putting them in the most trendy thing, but really Mm -hmm. getting to know them as a person and why they feel a certain way about fashion and clothes and things like that. So it definitely could go hand in hand. Sure. That's huge. Now you talked about life coaching. So you are a life coach, which is awesome. Um, tell us a little more about that. Like, what is it? Do you have an area of expertise in that? Like something you're specializing in? Or what is that you focus on life coach? Because that's huge. I'm a certified life coach as well. So the more the merrier. So you're going to have to collaborate, honey. <laughs> yes. Um, well, so I definitely want to take up some more courses on it. But for right now, um, I am dabbing in a little bit of like marriage Mm -hmm. coaching and then um more on the spiritual side divine feminine um chakras manifestation and that stuff so just trying to um help people understand the areas of life there where maybe they're repeating certain habits right um certain changes that haven't been happening in their life and they're trying to figure out why um i'm a big dreamer so that also plays a big part i'm a lucid dreamer uh-huh. Um, and so yeah, I'm I'm still awesome. like in the early stages right now, but I okay. love advice. I love talking to people, so I wanted to kind of merge that in my brand. That's huge. That is that sounds like something that I have never heard of. To be honest really? with you, I don't think I've heard of a fashion designer and a stylist. Um, I know someone who is a high end stylist, and they do a great job. But there is no get to know your client. It's, hey, I got this, you need this, or I have this in, this is what you need. Okay, I got it, here you go. There's no relationship, you know, it's just, it is, it's just yeah. a connection to make it happen. So the fact that you can connect with clientele, and, and then you have two different avenues. I feel like you could capture people that are just interested in the life coaching and the bettering themselves. Someone who's right. interested in both the fashion, like, how can I feel good on the inside and show that on the outside? And then maybe exactly. someone that just needs some fashion advice. You know, they've been wearing these um the same hairstyle since 1972, and they wore them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you know, it's cool. So I'm really excited to see where your career takes you. I mean, I'm gonna have to get some tips, honey, on YouTube because it is a struggle. Oh, I got you. So many people in my family like think I have like this big wardrobe because I always like put together like different looks. But as you can see, like you just need a few key pieces and you can make so many outfits. So it's just all about knowing how to style and then just being true to yourself, but also not being afraid to experiment either and step outside the box. You know, it's fun. Just have fun with it. Don't like, you know, be too serious or limit yourself, you know? Absolutely. I think that's the key. Have fun, enjoy what you do, and be authentic, like you said earlier. Now, before we wrap up, is there anything that you want to share? Do you have any events going on, anything coming up that you want to share with the people? (laughs) So, yes. um, A few years ago, I was going to go on tour, and I am now thinking about rolling that back out again. So, it's going to be cocktails and combos. Um, that's going to be coming up soon. So I'm going to do like a 10 city tour, just meeting everybody, having a few different people on my panel from each city, having right. some cool food from each city. So it's going to be a really cool thing. We're going to sit down, have chats, you know, talk and get to know each other, just have often fun. That's really what my brand is about. So um, that's coming up soon. I'm not sure when yet, but definitely stay tuned on all my social media and yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me. I'm just, you know, filming every day, pictures, stuff, getting to know everybody, you know, that's on my tribe, my chameleons. That's my little name. Oh, <laughs> on okay, YouTube. okay. Yeah, so, yeah, my little chameleons, because, you know, I'm, I'm forever changing, and I'm right. you know, never staying in one place, so I feel like that was a fitting name, but, yeah. That's, Absolutely. That's well, congratulations on that, because um, I, I know the planning that comes, and I have that on a way down the line it'll be yeah. later but i i know that so much i uh, much success to you on that and preparation you so and everything and guys listen all of her information is going to be in the episode description i'll be sure to have all of her social media social media handles so you can hit her up make sure you subscribe to her youtube channel and mine um because honey i'm struggling i need some <laughs> I need the numbers, but thank you again. I'm sure we will definitely hear from you again on the podcast. 
because you're doing big things. So I definitely, and yep, she said a podcast wants to support you in any way that we can. Yes, thank you so much. This is a wonderful opportunity. I had a good time talking to you. No problem. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going into our next and final segment.